Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, things have gotten really, really weird in WWE. And I'm so sorry that Chad Gable signed that contract extensive because boy, was he in for a surprise on Monday. The fallout from Clash of the Castle and the weirdest, most insane ending to Raw that we've seen in a really, really long time is all going to be discussed. And oh yeah, AJ Styles is going back to Japan, by the way. All of that and more in episode 380 of Kings of the Rings podcast exclusively here on WrestleAddict Radio. And it starts right now. Yeah, you all thought he was going to TNA. (laughs) (laughs) It was a possibility. Listen, I still feel like he could have gone to TNA, but I mean, Japan, Japan's good. Japan's, he still could go to TNA. Yeah, no, I mean, he could. Who knows? Yeah, it's, it's still a possibility. I'm telling you, dude, he's just like, I don't want to go back there. I don't <laughs> care how much money you give me. I don't want to go there. You, you never know. Money does talk. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kings of the Rings podcast episode number 380, a not so monumental episode until you realize that next week, no, next week, sorry, tomorrow after we've recorded this, is a day we actually kind of freed the slaves, but not really. But also, more importantly, uh, tomorrow is also technically, technically, Mr. Tarashok, my eighth year in podcasting. Because eight years ago, I started podcasting with you on Juneteenth. When we freed yeah. the slaves, when John, Ma- well, no, sorry, when Dean Ambrose cast in, when LeBron, when Kyrie won a championship, can you do you remember that? That happened. But they were with the Cavaliers. With the Cavaliers, yeah, all of that happened. Yeah, all that happened eight years ago. So happy anniversary to me. You know, three hundred and fifty episodes later. Some shit June like that. Juneteenth, forever known as the day Ricky freed me from a two man podcast. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. So, thank you guys for joining us. Obviously, King Ricky Rose, Ambassador Biggs, your lead host here with me back from Boston, but totally missing the end of the finals. Will Tereshock, how are you? Dude, I'm, yeah, I'm glad, glad I wasn't there. there. Because I, I was in Boston, Boston the night I got spanked in Dallas. Dallas. Let, Let me tell you, I never drove, drove home faster. <laughs> I got out of Boston with no, no issue. issue. Everyone was in their house <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> If, if they, they was, if that, that was game, game five, <laughs> and it, it was, was in Boston, Boston, I'd still be in chat. I'd probably just, just be getting, getting home. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. And back again for the very first time, almost on Must Relax, but always Team Lance. K Fave, how are you? Hi, hi. I am less injured, feeling less old today. <laughs> and I have red hair for the first time in 10 years. So that's a. Yeah, thank you. That's something. Yes, welcome back, Judy Funny, please. Judy, 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 Judy. Oh God. We had it's a, I almost thought about I'll be honest. I almost thought about just like skipping the show and then waiting going to next week with our prohibited portal slash for, forbidden door uh show featuring not one, but now two guests, because the other one has oh, been we, confirmed. We confirmed, we confirmed. We confirmed both of them. We confirmed both of them, yes. I have verbal uh, commitments yeah. from both of them. So it's gonna okay, be the show last week with my proposal, like literally at the end of the show. show. Oh my god, no. Who's coming on the show? So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna break it for you right now. Is it clock in his dad? Is it clock in his dad? No. It's almost no almost better. Almost better than Slack and his mom. No, we've never met Slack's mom, although we should. We should. I uh, no. <laughs> I don't feel Slack and his girlfriend. His mother. <laughs> well, let's not do Slack and his girlfriend. I know way too much information. Anywho, um, but that would that would that would that would be something. Okay, I'll text you. I'll text you. Okay. <laughs> I will text you. No. So Will and I had the the wherewithal to know, like, hey, we know nothing about New Japan. <laughs> we barely know enough about AEW. A lot of that we rely on yourself, Kay. Uh, so yeah. Will, <laughs> so Will had the bright ideas that we bring in an expert in Japanese pro wrestling, and turns out we have a young lion on our staff with us at WrestleAddict Radio. Oh shit! So we, I have a verbal confirmation. We are going to have Slack on. Next week, we are going to have Mr. YLP of Young Lions Perspective on as well. It's going to be a five person mega show opening the prohibited portal. And essentially, we're just going to monitor Slack and Mr. YLP go at it for a while. So, I guess that takes away my idea of skipping the show next week to go to the Mets and Yankees game. Correct. 
Uh, I was so I'm like, wait a minute. It's it's a city city field. We can all just hop on a train. It's the perfect perfect plan. plan. Now now that I know it's a big game set next week in City Field, I might pick up tickets. It's not on Wednesday, but on another day. (laughs) It It is legit. um, Actually, for complete sideboard for a work thing, um, Jess is coming to another Yankee Stadium stadium thing, and I'm like, no, 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 no. No, no one, one gets to take you to a baseball, baseball game before I do. I'm, I'm taking you to a first baseball, baseball game. game. Ah, so, there you I go. Like, I was like, I'll look up, like, up, up, up tickets. Now that I know, next week, Mets and Yankees. <laughs> done and done. Mets and Yankees. Yeah, I think it's like Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. Mets and Yankees, good first day. Trust me, I've done it before. Um... Yeah. So, yeah, I thought about canceling, and then and then everything happened that happened this past last couple of days in in the world of pro wrestling. Before we get to that, obviously, I do want to I do want to kind of talk about this and also give it to give it to our resident rainbow, uh, mix mix Murphy kayfabe, who designed this awesome awesome logo for us as Wrestlatic Radio pride logo we have merchandise that is on sale not only for this month but for forever in perpetuity until we decide to come up with something else k obviously as i told will last week is now the hope of war the head of uh, what is it product enhancement the head of product the head of product enhancement the hope of war uh so k came up with this great design we are going to use this design forever and ever until we decide that we are not going to do it anymore but it's i think this one's going to stick this might be one of my favorite designs of yours k not going to lie but mine too actually yeah. it's so like it's like the least amount of work I've done in design yet. <laughs> it definitely catches the eye. It does. It does. It sticks out. It looks great on merch so far. So that is on sale right now. Uh, we're going to have some more merch coming out very, very soon. Uh, well, it's kind of already designed. Essentially, more advertisement for the other merch coming on as well. So simple plug there. Like, share, subscribe. The link to all of that stuff are in the description below, um, wherever you're listening to us or wherever you're watching us live right now on Twitter, Twitch, and or uh, YouTube as well. Uh, so like I said... Things got really crazy really quick, especially the ending of Raw last night. So we had Money in the Bank qualifiers, which we'll talk about in two weeks, because guess what, folks? Money in the Bank is in like two weeks, by the way. Um, so I know. That's dude. such a fast <laughs> turnaround. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And then after Money in the Banks, we actually get a break and we get four weeks till SummerSlam. So there, there's your little breather. Um, so... So money in the uh, we had money bank qualifier. Jay Uso yeeted his way to becoming Mister Yeet in the bank. Potentially, he's already my front runner, but we'll talk about that more later. And then lights started going out randomly in a very fiendish way. Uh, we saw we saw we saw the door, and the door opened, and and then after the door opened, we saw we saw a woman crawling through the door which reminded me of the ring and the ring as a child scared the living shit out of me (laughs) yeah same (laughs) that was accurate yeah so i was like oh this is gonna get real weird now isn't it lady comes out and then they pan to they go backstage and you see you see bodies on the floor you see blood everywhere chad gable's been shot in the temple (laughs) That was, yeah, that was bizarre. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck happened to Chad Gable? <laughs> it took a pickaxe. He should have, he should, he should have read his contract. Eber Vatter, Triple H is a great capitalist. Hey, bud, just sign right here, bud. You're right here. You know, no one's going to kill you yet. Don't worry. <laughs> um, which is ironic because Chad Gable has a, uh, has a qualifying match next week. So I guess not anymore. Um, and then you saw you saw all these bodies and honestly great live special effects. I did not know they had this capability in them. And kudos to the production team. And then you saw Uncle Howdy and they all came out and they took the lantern. And Uncle Howdy said, We're here. Hey Fretz. He said, We're here and blew it out. And then the screen went black. I and mean, you saw that damn woman <laughs> like jump the <laughs> screen jump screen uh right as Raw went off the air. And it was, I thought, absolutely brilliant production work. Again, I didn't know they could do that in such a quick turnaround. So this is what's, this faction is called the Wyatt Six. S-I-C-K-S is the official spelling of the Wyatt Six. Yeah. But when you look at the merchandise that came out right after their debut, there is the number six there as well. So technically the six are Uncle Howdy. Bo Dallas, big ass rambling rabbit with the with the help mallet is returning Eric Rowan. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Mercy the Buzzard is Dexter Loomis. Okay, he was the one that was on that was in actual gorilla on top of like the shelves and stuff, sitting cross legged mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, Husky Harris with the pig smoke mask is Joe Gacy, and Sister Abigail being Nikki Cross. The six member quote unquote is the spirit of Bray Wyatt, which I believe would be personified as the Lantern. So there are your six of the Wyatt six. So that is that is the that is a faction. So initial thoughts. Will Wait, what? What? Yes. Oh, Mr. Mr. Fred's in, in the chat. chat. I saw. I saw. All right. So let's explain to you. Sorry, I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry yeah, to no, it's okay. I, I will explain to you. Okay. <laughs> so on NXT last week, uh, Cody showed up and got invited to the cookout by Trick Williams. Great line. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, the six members, not Alexa. Um. So, and Cody said, hey, your next opponent for when you defend the title at NXT Heatway, which is also Money in the Bank weekend in Toronto, uh, your next opponent is going to be determined by uh, a 25-man battle royal, which kicked off NXT as we are recording right now. And some of the people in the battle royal may not be from the same locker room. Obviously, with a TNA integration in the NXT, uh, Tatum yeah. Paxley showed up on TNA's, uh, I think, a TNA show on Friday to go up against Jordan Grace. So there's integration there. So it was very well known that uh, potentially TNA was going to show up in this battle royal. And apparently, according to Fretz, we said his name so many times he finally appeared. Joe Hendry is on NXT in this battle royal, as well as Frankie Kazarian from, from TNA as well. So there, there's that breaking news for UK. And I'm so glad I DVR'd it. This is all That was also the other reason I thought about not doing the show today. Because like, I kind of want to see who shows up in this battle royal. But, that is pretty, pretty cool. cool. I, I just like the TNA NXT integration. integration. Yeah. Me too. It's really cool. Yes, but back to the back to the freakiness at hand. Uh, Will, did you watch this Wyatt Six? I did. When, when, when I heard Seth came, came back, I was like, oh, I'll watch, watch Raw before, before I do the, the show. show. <laughs> and then I heard the Six to Six thing. I'm like, all right, I'm definitely watching Raw before the show. And I did. I finished it about half an hour ago. Okay. And, um... At first, I was just like, this is bizarre. Yeah. It wasn't until they went backstage and I saw the crime scene where I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Because, I don't know, I don't know why, but I think in the long run that this is going to flop, personally. It, but it's, it's, off, it's off for a pretty interesting start. Yeah, it, but I, I don't know start. how they can do this without Ray. And... Like, what, what does Alexa Bliss even do? I think, I think she should be involved in this somehow because that tie-in. Maybe, Maybe she, she doesn't want to do it, though. I mean, who, who knows? knows? Maybe they have something but more for her, but... Nick, Nikki, Nikki Cross, Cross is a great, great choice. choice. Uh, Nikki Cross, I thought should have been in it to begin with. You know, she's the only... And Sister Abigail, I think, was, on, was the only female character that Bray created. Yeah. So, so it made sense. But we'll get... We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, Kayfabe, what are your thoughts on this? I'm, like, like super excited about what's going to happen. happen. Yeah. I feel, I feel like low-key low bad for Bo Dallas because, because like, that's so much pressure. It is. Like, that's, that's like, like an absurd amount of pressure. pressure. I think that they... Uh, I'm working oh, on I'm working on it. A, okay. Um, I feel like there's, like, so much potential. And um, I, feel I feel more confident con- in the Uncle Howdy run with Vince gone. Because, there. like... I That's feel fair. like Vince probably would have like ruined it and made it like super cheesy. But I like, I'm like, I feel like such a mark, but like, I feel like I'm like fully like, I'm invested in the Triple H era. Like, everything feels so fresh and different. Yeah. Which is what gives me hope that like they can execute a story that has so much like both heaviness to it as well as like there's a legacy to live up to. Yeah, and I um, I believe that um, in this instance that uh, they're going to continue the whole tra- the seemingly the similar tradition of that all the merchandise from the Wyatt Six, just like Bray's merchandise as well, is going to go to Bray's family and JoJo and the kids and all of that. Good. So I think I don't think they're getting like you know the normal cuts of the merch. A lot of that merchandise sales are going to go to the family of JoJo. Bo and the crew get something. I mean, they got contracts. I know, but for merch too. Like True. That could be a massive part of their payday. Yeah. 
No, you're right. You're absolutely right. It could be. Like, I, I have no problem with Bray's family getting Bray's cut, but the fact Eric Will, Rowan shouldn't get paid because Bray died, like. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't merch sales, that's, isn't merch sales a bonus? On, isn't merch sales like a commission be, pretty much based on top of their base salary? Yeah. Like when John Cena is, was number one in merch sales and LA Knight's number one in merch sales, yeah. LA Knight and John Cena gets a cut of their merch. Correct. Yeah. So faction members, like say, take Judgment Day, for example, right? Mm-hmm. I think it would be fair. Well, I guess it also depends on what kind of merch that there's Rhea specific Judgment Day merch as opposed to overall Judgment Day merch. It's probably cut separately. Yeah. Like Rhea gets her cut and then she probably gets a small cut of the Judgment Day. Yeah. But yeah, merchandise is a huge part of how these guys make a living. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, no, it it is, it is something to look into uh, with this. But I I like the debut. This is, it's almost as wild as a scene as the, when the Nexus debuted. Yeah, it's it's definitely mm-hmm. memorable. Like yeah. I'm not gonna forget this anytime soon. It's like yeah, remember when these psychopaths and masks like <laughs> murdered people in Gorilla? <laughs> Except the cameraman, they murdered everyone but the cameraman. <laughs> Yeah, it was great, but I, I do kind of have a similar concern um, that you have, Will. Is is that where do you go from? Where do you gonna where do you go from here? When are they gonna wrestle? How are they gonna wrestle? Do you, they the thing that's the thing that was circling around my head today was also um, is this isolated to Raw? Because Probably. well, because the 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 missing with the feed and stuff because they messed up the feed to to Raw uh, yesterday too. So they mess up the feet, the raw, but they've been doing this on like SmackDown. I think also on NXT as well. So they have been doing it everywhere. They did it on the pay per view too. Correct. So RV's Mm -hmm. RV's gonna be like RV just gonna pop up all these places. In my opinion, they could. Yeah. In my opinion, I like the idea of keeping it a raw problem. You know, and I do too. And I think the multiple appearances could have been a red herring because it's like well, you don't know when. when I think that too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's, there's, there's a thing. The fact that we're asking questions and like trying to fancy book this is a good sign for yeah. sure. Like, I think it'd be a cool idea if they can't really do the in ring stuff because Sarah Chuan with that about Bray Wyatt, like that match he had with L.A. Knight, the Mountain Dew match, it wasn't good. Oh, the the uh, the pitch black match. Yeah, the pitch black match. Yeah, like his matches with Seth Rollins, they weren't good. However, the match with John Cena, WrestleMania, the cinematic match, was fucking awesome. Yeah. The Bray Wyatt swamp fight um, with Braun Strowman I was loved fucking it. awesome. Loved it. The Matt Hardy fights were fucking awesome. I think you could make this work, work if you did it in cinematic matches. Yeah, cinematic might be the way to actually kind of kind of do this. And KP, It is hard yeah. to do that on a pay-per-view, though, because it's like you're going to have the live crowd sit and watch it for 25 minutes. Yeah. Or you can unless of, they pre tape portions of it and then they do some like in live in ring, which WWE isn't, has done before. They could do that too. But that's yeah, how they did boiler that, room. Before. That's how they did boiler yeah. room brawl. That's that's yeah. Okay, they could do that. I think that yeah. if you, just, you, you do the finish in the ring, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense. Sure. Yeah, no, that 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 really, really does. And I, I want to see if you guys actually noticed this because there's a couple of interesting things. So when they did the reveal, and it was it was obviously kind of the brace second you know theme uh for a secondary return it was only the first note they yeah, this, never this moved the, past yeah. the first note which Dude. made it all the more creepy and then i i think matt ritter of smacking it raw who's a giant horror person who's the first person i thought about when this all was going down he put it he put he summed it together perfectly they did it in texas it's literally a texas mm-hmm. chainsaw massacre spoof Oh, that's good. They're in Corpus Christi. Because they're in Corpus Christi. Mm-hmm. Man, why the fuck did Corpus Christi get this? They didn't deserve they it. They get weird stuff. Like, people get thrown into the water in Corpus Christi. The weirdest <laughs> thing happens when WWE goes to Corpus Christi. It does. It does. It, it was pretty crazy. And I thought what was a good thing, too, and I think you'll like this, Will, from a production standpoint, and we're going to talk about it. When Drew, quote, unquote, quits, and they follow Drew backstage, it's the same path they took for 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 the Wyatt Six debut. So it's kind of already establishing that's the yeah, shot that, that they're one, taking. That one shot. Yeah. yeah. And then Triple H pushing the camera away, I thought was a nice touch too. Yeah, no, it was good. Mm-hmm. He it, really sold the realism. Yeah, no, it was it was good. I, I like I like it. It's it's just wildly, wildly creative. Uh Kay, what are your thoughts on Chad Gable getting shot? Good riddance. Bye. <laughs> It would have been really funny if this Otis was just sitting over there puffing and the wide six are like, yo. Uh, I'm wondering. <laughs> well, because didn't Chad have a match with Braun Strowman like earlier in the night? Yeah, so so what happened was
Never mess with him. Yeah. I guess. Oh, that makes that makes sense. You did. No, you're good, Kay. You're good. You're back in now. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Just a little technical difficulty because you're not here all the time. But yeah, no, I get it. Like, yeah, we're just not, um, we're just not, they just not, they don't mess with them. Like they, like they show up in a brawn match or they look at brawn and they kind of just like walk away mm-hmm. or something like that. They're like, you, you, you're, we're not going to mess with you at all. I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. It's, it's ironic because in that match, in the match with brawn that Chad had, Otis finally went after Chad yeah, and snapped. Personally, he snapped. And he like freaked out and hulked out and then after post match, uh, Otis was like, I'm getting out of here. He like he packed his stuff and left. So it was kind of so they kind of just left Chad on his own. So yeah. it was like, oh, I was like, oh, did Chad did Otis know something about what was going oh, on? Oh, maybe they like tipped him off, like, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be around for this. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised. You know what would have been really funny, which probably would have taken it away from from the whole thing is our truth. I do. I think Brett's posted the meme. <laughs> the R truth. The picture of Judgment Day. Imagine if like R truth came out by accident. <laughs> oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> He's like, what oh, if I he starts the selling brothers? <laughs> <laughs> you guys must be the what APA. If starts, <laughs> what if he starts doing what he did with Judgment Day with the Wyatt Six, and he has his own merch for them? <laughs> You can't. You can't. I love R2 best with Judgment Day, but if you want to take this faction seriously, you cannot have R2 a part of it at all. Um, but yeah, how do you, it's really hard to book this type of faction because you look at Bray. Bray tried to do something like this, but Bray never got to see it come to fruition because he got sick, which ultimately led to his, you know, um, to his death. So I don't know how you actually book something like this. For them at all? Does anybody have any any ideas? Will Terra? Yeah, I, I I just said cinematic matches. I yeah. think that's the way you have to do this properly and kind of, you know, you just gotta be a lot of Google and Gaga as as uh, Pritchard would call it. Yeah, it's a lot of so, pomp and circumstance. And I think they probably have to take the masks off when they wrestle. It's, yeah, I don't know how you wrestle in a mask like that. How do you wrestle in that? Like it's it 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 works really well but then you know sometimes and then the bell rings so i'm skeptical but i'm hopeful i'm hopeful for too touche to them touche for them for trying i don't blame them for trying it's worth an attempt for someone that i never really saw get off the ground in the first place yeah it's it's yeah i don't want to i don't i want to give it a chance yeah but i'm not hopeful yeah we we got to give it a chance okay how would you how would you book the wyatt six i think another way to like creatively book the wyatt six without like making it feel like unrealistic they would be wrestling is if you put put them against other like fantasy like characters like Finn Balor could go demon Finn for example. Yeah. Um mm. I don't know. Who else could go scary? Well right Braun now? Braun was back in the back murdered too. Was Braun yeah. back there murdered? Did they take Braun out? was back there. I know it's him by the arm tattoo. I, I identify him by his tattoo. Braun Strowman uh, or Braun Breaker? Strowman. Really? I did not see his Big yeah, I'm ninety. I'm ninety sure it was him. I'll have to watch again. So, I like I think, couldn't read anybody that was back there. I saw someone that I thought might have been Walter, but I wasn't sure. I was looking for Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Trips would have definitely been. He's like, dude, I'm I'm doing this, man. I'm doing it. He's like, he's like, no, man. Just make sure I gotta make sure the camera doesn't show me because I'm still in Gorilla, like producing the show. <laughs> <laughs> Something <laughs> happened with Adam Pierce. They took over Adam Pierce's Twitter. Mm. Oh, did they? They took over Adam Pierce's Twitter. Yeah. Um, they took over Adam Pierce's Twitter. I know a bunch of announcers were like, "Holy shit!" I think Vic Joseph was like, "Does anybody is anybody scared to go to sleep tonight?" <laughs> <laughs> the best tweet I saw, which was very ominous too, uh, was 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 Matt Hardy said, "And so it begins." Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Honestly, it, they're in TNA now. It could happen. Yeah, yeah, it it could happen. Your boy Jeff came back, and so that would be somebody. Oh, that would be he. Really, just was like, let me out of AEW. Let me go back to see my brother. Um, he with the quickness. Good <laughs> with the quickness. Thank God. Um, 
if 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 a TNA WWE thing is going to be as legitimate as they're making it, especially with NXT, bring in the heart, bring in bring in Matt Hardy and Brother Nero. Have them go at it. They yeah. would have a ball. Yeah, they would. That be that could be a whole hour of Raw. I don't care. <laughs> just, just do it. That would that would be probably the only like supernatural. Or even, I don't know if you deem them supernatural or they just kind of just weird psychopathic murderers. Even so, weird psychopathic murderer is re- a realistic opponent for them. That's true. That's true. I like maybe maybe the scariest thing is that Dexter Loomis will actually speak. Oh shit! Maybe. <laughs> That would be good. The best is that Indy Hartwell posted, like, where can I find a good divorce lo- divorce lawyer? That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty good. <laughs> the business ain't dead. Kayfabe ain't dead. <laughs> no, it's good. But I'm, I'm hoping for the Wyatt Six. That thing has just shocked all of wrestling. And we'll see what we we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting what happened on what happens on SmackDown if they show up, or if this is a Raw thing. And like poor Adam Pearce, he thought he was getting away with getting rid of Chelsea Green, and now he has to deal with psychopaths. Poor man, poor man. Nick Aldis would never. Nick Aldis would not allow this <laughs> at all. <laughs> but moving on, before all of that wildness that happened on Monday happened, we had Clash at the Castle with, in my opinion. One of the most comical endings to a pay per view since um, since Great Kali showed up in the Punjabi prison match to help out Jinder beat Randy. <laughs> well, we, me and you were watching yeah. the show together. Kali yeah. shows up, we start crying, laughing. I laughed <laughs> too loudly. <laughs> It was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It was so good. And he holds the title upside down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It was great. So before we get into the calamity that was Clash of the Castle, what are your overall thoughts, Kay Fave? I really liked the show. Um, pacing was really good. I, for the most part, wasn't bored, and the main event was hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely hysterical. Will Tarashog. Yeah, I thought it was all right. Um, the I Quit match was good. Finish was fine. The the, the tag titles was a nice surprise. Yeah. Uh, actually, a shocking surprise. Well, I think we discussed that's the right move or not. And the main event, the main event was fun. I mean, I actually, I was also watching it because um, I actually went out to back to my church this weekend because it was my aunt's 75th birthday. Yeah. And we were going out to eat Saturday night. And we literally left right when the bell rang the main event. <laughs> so I had to watch it when I got home and it was spoiled for me. Cause I went on Twitter. Like I went on Instagram, like an idiot. Yeah, you did. So that kind of ruined a little bit for me, but I thought the ca- the camera angles were phenomenal. Perfect. When the ref comes in and you get it from behind, <laughs> Perfect. it was just like, yeah, it was great. I mean, it was, it was really clever or something Kevin Dunn never would have thought of. Yeah, no, so. not, a, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. We're it. It was be- a fun show. It was a, it was a house show. It was fun. It was a very. It was more than a house show. It was Drew getting screwed all over again. One of the best pictures in wrestling this year of Punk just giving him the two count of Drew looking at him like he's seen a ghost. What I'm calling, what a lot of people have called, the Scotland screw job. Is, they call it the Glasgow, the Glasgow screw job. I call it the Scotland screw, screw Scotland job. Scotland screw job. I like the, I like, I like the alliteration. alliteration. Yeah, I like the alliteration. That's why. Um, what a finish! What a what an absolute finish! Also, great match. This match actually sold me on Damian Priest's championship run. Like shenanigans aside, like he took he took a horrible. I thought he broke his ankle. Like when he when he when he messed up the uh, the top rope spot. Yeah. Like, yeah. that looked really scary. He got caught? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he got caught. And, like, thankfully, Drew knew how to kind of keep kayfabe and kind of also help him out of it at the same yeah. time. But, like, he... Because Damien- he was like, I can't win like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do I do? I do. <laughs> <laughs> and then... He he got him out, and then for the rest of the match, Damian Priest sold the sold the bum ankle, which I think it was actually really injured too to begin with. So yeah, I hurt like a motherfucker. Yeah, I bet it did. It looks painful. It looked, like it very scary. Really scary. <laughs> um, for him, you you have the match. It's a great match, and Punk comes out with one of the greatest troll jobs and very very short pants. 
I don't know who put those pants on him, but he needs new ones. <laughs> um, Kay, did you see the footage of what happened? I before? watched it live. No, no, no. Did you see what WWE released right after that oh, happened? Did we, did we, oh, after it happened. No, okay. After it happened? Did Tyson Fury come out and sing again? No, 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 no. So d- right after the screw job happened. I watched the post show. Right after the screw job with happened. With the donuts. <laughs> We will talk about that great ass fucking promo of a of a post show performance by Punk. No, right after the screw job happened, they were going off air, and the visceral reactions that I've seen from the crowd there was amazing. Um, WWE released footage of right before Punk came out, so Punk's there in this like Nike compression long sleeve that he's wearing, and he's watching it everything go down. He looks at Ref Jess and it's like Jess. Do you have an extra referee shirt? And she's like, uh, yeah. Why? He's like, give me your shirt. Give me your shirt. He's like, oh, here you go. Give me your shirt. What, what do you need it for? Don't worry. I'll, you'll get it back. You'll get it back. And he runs out. <laughs> and that's how that's how the him. moment happened. <laughs> that is how. I like the minute the ref went out. I'm like, Punk's coming out in a ref shirt. <laughs> it was so good. It was so it's good. It's perfect. Punt. That's hilarious. You know what it reminded mm-hmm. me of? And well, you'll remember this. Remember when The Rock was a special guest on SmackDown? It was like one, two. It doesn't matter if The Rock counts the three. <laughs> 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 That's what it reminded me of. Oh man! And then the presser happened. The presser happened. One, Damian Priest had a solid presser. Did Did you watch the presser for Damian? I, I didn't watch the presser. No, I watched the whole presser. So Damian's legitimately hurt because. I think, hey, you'll understand this. That wasn't Damien Spreeze. That was an angry New York Puerto Rican that went into that press conference because he was scared. <laughs> he literally goes, all rise for me. I'm not going to answer any questions until everybody stands up. Everybody. <laughs> and then he goes on about like how Drew needs to go to the back of the line. I beat him with one leg. Why does? Why am I even fighting him anymore? Um, he, Mood, honestly. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I've already proven myself. I don't, I'm not a paper champion. I'm not a transitional champion. Like, it was a great promo by him. And then they brought out Punk, who comes out in Kelly Green Irish Football Club soccer jacket and a my boy and a pile of donuts. <laughs> and just all he needed was the spin drift with him. And just goes on an absolute tear. Some some Scottish guy was like, Drew, you not Drew, he goes, Hey, so you screwed over Drew, so all of Scotland kind of hates you right now. Now you're wearing this Irish football club shirt. So like another half of Scotland hates you right now. How are you feeling? And he's like, First off, sir, I do not agree with your inference. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got some cheers. People still like me here. <laughs> he just his fame his, my best line he said, he goes. He goes, I don't wish injury on anybody, but when Drew told me that he prayed and he was happy that I was injured, that's when I decided that no matter what wrestling promotion I'm in, no matter, as long as there is breath in my lungs, Drew will never win another title. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. I, I was like, wow. That's like, if Kendrick Lamar and Drake didn't exist, CM Punk would be the best hater of the year. He was <laughs> like it, it was amazing, and then he started offering donuts to people. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely like several times. He's like, "Are you sure no one wants a donut? <laughs> <laughs> no one wanted one." I would have taken one. Like, yeah, I would have taken one. <laughs> I would, Boris also would have taken one. I, well, we know Boris would have taken one. So, so, and then, and then on 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 Raw, Drew quit. Drew, we were all waiting. That was so good. We were all waiting. So Wait, I didn't see Drew quit. So, all right, I'll explain to you. Okay, so Drew McIntyre, what we were all waiting for this wild promo that Drew's gonna cut because Drew has gotten has gotten screwed at Clash of the Castle twice. If you remember, he was supposed to beat Roman mm-hmm. and Solo debuted. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not only did Solo debut, he almost got cashed in on. Tyson Fury had to help him out. Solo debuts, he still loses. This year, he's supposed to beat David Priest and CM Punk screws him over. And so we're figuring this might be a madman. Drew comes out, he goes, he starts to speak, and you can tell this is a hurt individual. He goes, screw it, I quit, and walks out. What a baby. <laughs> Without, saying, <laughs> Without saying a thing, just he goes walks so fast. Yeah. <laughs> 
Adam Page tries to stop him. Triple H tries to stop him. So he's gone. So Drew is kayfabe quit. This is very... And I saw something which I think you'll you'll like. Well, this is very apparently ninety seven Shawn Michaels Bret Hart. Interesting comparisons because Shawn couldn't wrestle because he was injured for a long yeah. period of time. CM Punk couldn't wrestle because he was a long re- period of time. Bret got screwed over in a cage match. Drew got screwed over at the Clash yeah, of the Castle. Parallels. Drew quit. Bret quit. <laughs> you know, so this might be. Drew also did get rid of all of his social media. Yeah, Drew delete all his. Be- that was so funny. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so this 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 could be just ninety seven Brett and Sean all over again, with Drew being Bret Hart, and CM Punk being HBK. So CM Punk apparently is going to be cleared. Uh, SmackDown's in Chicago. Surprise, surprise. So CM Punk does what CM Punk does. Says, I'm skipping Raw and I'm going to show up to SmackDown in Chicago. So Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So expect Drew McIntyre to also be in Chicago to probably destroy Punk. As a- yeah, he's going to beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> it's it's, yeah. it's violence. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of violence for a Fox broadcast. A lot of violence. So that leaves Damian Priest without anything to do. Until Colonel Sanders, Seth Rollins came back out of fucking nowhere. Yeah, I was like, the fuck is this? <laughs> the outfit was fine. It was the flat brim hat. I go, why are you doing this, Seth? I loved it. I thought it looked great. You know what the funny thing about Seth Rollins is? Is that, wow, he lasted one month with at home with Becky Lynch and decided I'm going to go back on the road. This, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Dude, he lasted. He literally lasted two months. Oh, two months. My bad. With, yeah. With, well, no, with, with with just the baby. Two months with the baby. <laughs> one month with Becky. <laughs> yeah. It's like I gotta go back on the road. I gotta go. I gotta uh, I'm out. <laughs> These two ladies are driving me fucking crazy. But I like it. Seth's back. Okay, what are your thoughts on the return of Seth freaking Rollins? I was super surprised to see Seth come back, but I'm very excited to see Seth back. But now I'm just like. It, I kind of fucked up my, like, what I thought might happen for SummerSlam. Because I was like, oh, it's going to be Punk and Drew. And now I'm like, oh, maybe it won't be. I just don't want it to be a triple threat. That's the only thing I don't want. Yeah. Because that's boring as fuck to me. I think Punk and Drew is a non-title blood feud at this point. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think, I think the trajectory. I think Damien Priest has earned his right to win at SummerSlam. I think... Here's what I think. I think Damien beats Seth. Seth does a job for Damien. Damien beats Seth. Yep. Um, yep. Uh-huh. Damien goes on to face Gunther as per already what's going on, what's already been said since since King of the Ring. Mm-hmm. Somehow, some way, Damien beats Gunther. Gunther beats Damien at Bash in Berlin several weeks later. I think it's a two parter with Damien and Gunther. Oh, I like that. You- oh, because Bash of Berlin's after SummerSlam. Yeah, SummerSlam begins yeah. August. Bash August Berlin- 31st. Yeah, Bash in Berlin ends August. So- yeah, they could do that. Yeah, because I figured, like, do, do you want to have Gunther come in as a already of a champion, or do you want him to have a massive have moment it. in yeah, Berlin? Have him win it. I think I would ha- rather have him win. Therefore, you give Damien. That would have a lot more impact. Yeah, and therefore, you give Damien Priest a solid, what, four months as world champion? Mm hmm. Uh, May, June, July, August. Yeah, yeah. four months. Yeah, beat. close to five since it's like the dead end of August. Yeah, so he beating Drew, beating Seth, beating Gunther once. It's a good run. A fine run. Yeah, it's a solid. It's a solid run for your first world title. And he's already and like the title did what it needed to do for for Damon. That's what I think is going to happen. Who the hell knows? But Seth's back. He's in the picture. I'm just waiting for somebody to kick him in the knee and he's injured again. <laughs> Stop. Don't I'm, say I'm, that. Man, take an arrow to the knee. <laughs> yeah. Something. Punk's going to do it, too. Punk probably will do it, too. I actually, I want Punk to be the troll of all of WWE. Like, everybody he hates, he just screws them over all the time. Honestly, I would be so here for C- the a CM Punk. Summer, summer of troll punk. Summer of punk, <laughs> the troll version. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. A troll in Central Park, mm-hmm. or whatever the Chicago equivalent would be. I don't, I don't fucking know. Um, a malort in Central Park or something. Remember malort shots, Will? Yeah. <laughs> that's just, that just sounds disgusting. Yeah, it was. We were dumb tourists, but hey, we did it. Just to say we did it. Um, we had to. Yeah, it's part of the culture. It was, and somebody was paying for our drinks. You don't deny a free drink. As, no, as you don't. Yeah. So 
at some point down the road, we're getting Seth and Punk, and I think it's going to be for the world title at Mania in Vegas. I think that's the end goal of all of this. Mm-hmm. I think at some point. So it's going to be a slow burn to it, but it's going to be a fun one. So right now, Money in the Bank is set. Drew, Seth, not Drew, my fault, Damien. That's the other day. Damien, Seth, and somehow Damien with all the other shit going on with Liv Morgan and Dom Mysterio and everything else is going to survive this. Kay, I know you had some comments about about Liv and Dom, and I want to give you some time to speak on it. Oh, how it's like the like the least realistic thing in wrestling. How Dom and Liv Morgan is the reason why people like call out wrestling for being fake because it is so horribly unbelievable <laughs> that Liv, who is cute, would try to fuck Dom who is not cute. <laughs> and I understand that it's a revenge thing, right? Yes. But no. <laughs> like, forget the fact that in IRL, he j- Dom just got married. Like, That's what ruins a lot of it for a lot of, like, diehards. Like, I don't give a fuck about that. Like, that's part of it. But it's just, like, not believable. They don't have chemistry. I don't think it's the idea for them to have chemistry. I get that it's supposed, supposed to be like to. Yeah. it's a reve- I get it's like a revenge fuck. Yeah, but I don't believe that he like want they want to bo- either of them would. I mean, like it doesn't feel I believable. Think Morgan, I think Liv Morgan would. She's doing a good job of selling it on screen. Yeah, she's doing a good job of selling. I just Dom Ooh. Dom's playing just the little kid too much because at this point I, I love Pat McAfee's play by play with the pat with the he's like, yeah, he's like Finn Balor took the took the key it's right there Cole what does this mean <laughs> and Cole's like I don't think we can say it on TV Pat <laughs> <laughs> no it was great I mean at this point I saw it and I was just like. I saw what, like, she was wearing Dom's cowboy. She's like, take it off me. And I'm like, at this point, Dom, I'm not blaming you for whatever you do right now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, 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 it's every little boy's dream. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I like it. I am vicariously wanting to live through Dominic Mysterio. Bad mustache and all, yeah. I don't, like, listen. Yeah. And somehow, yeah. some way, every, it's like, Dom never seeks out these relations. Because remember, Rhea manipulated Dom to begin with. Oh, yeah. As the storyline began, true. they weren't in love and love. Rhea manipulated Dom as a way to get at uh, Ray. Dude, Dom is such a cuck. <laughs> Do, I don't, yeah. <laughs> he's like, okay. Like, put it this way. Imagine a scenario where Rhea comes back and then Liv goes after Rhea and Rhea's about about it. And then <laughs> Dom is just like, well, I'm just here to watch. <laughs> it's literally going to be Rhea versus Liv, Dom's dick on a pole. Yeah, like, I do a, I a like custody that, of Don match would be really fun. Again, again, <laughs> again. <laughs> and Ben fucking Vicky has to miss her spot again, and Rhea has to be like, "Where's Vicky? Where's yeah. Vicky?" Yeah, but Kay, Kay, I totally get what you're saying. Um, it doesn't doesn't feel real or believable. Uh, yeah, I'm totally with you, especially because last week I mentioned you know we know Don has got married, um, Ooh. but. It's. I don't know why it's working for me. I think it is just because it's the Liv guy fantasy. What, yeah, well, that one and two in in kayfabe. Liv doesn't really believe what she's doing. She's just trying to fuck with Rhea, mm-hmm. and she knows it's working because it is working. Yeah, Dom is like, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and honestly, I'd probably be the same way. <laughs> yeah. Even if you know it's fake, you, this is PC. Every man is a PC that goes. If it's real. <laughs> that's, true. That's, true. that's such a guy thought. Maybe. What if? Maybe. I mean, it, this person might be a scam ass me for $250, but then again. <laughs> pros and cons, pros and cons. Gotta weigh it out. Pros and cons. Yeah, I I, I could it's a bad. I don't know. The, this week was much better than last than week. last week or the week before. So I think it's it's escalating properly. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think Rhea comes back for a little bit. Like I think she's still a few months away. I agree. I was I was saying summer I think SummerSlam ish. Well SummerSlam's not that far away now. I don't think she comes back till after. I mean she fucked up her yeah, I think it's the collarbone. Shoulder. Shoulder and collarbone. collarbone. Yeah, that those are horrible yeah. injuries to come back from. It I takes think a she long can time make to heal. Okay, let me rephrase. 
I think she can make an appearance without necessarily meaning she's coming back for wrestling. <laughs> Fair. I like that. Do you want to spoil? Could... Do you want here's the thing? Do you want to spoil the big return though? Because if she's not being physical, if she can't be physical, why use her? That's a good point. As a distraction for Liv to lose the title. See, but but then but don't you want her coming back to be this big rah rah moment and build up like the thing of Triple H in the Garden, right? When you mm-hmm. tore his quad, mm-hmm. they had vign- they even they had vignettes. They played my um, sacrifice by uh by Creed, yeah my right? sacrifice. And now imagine if Triple H just kind of showed up six months prior or three months prior to like distract Shawn Michaels for some reason. It's to take takes away from the comeback moment. No, I get what you're saying. At this point, you've now sold me well inadvertently on Rhea Ripley coming back in total Triple H Madison Square Garden gear. Like, <laughs> and look, oh, dude, jean, <laughs> with uh, Creed? jean jacket. Hell Not even yeah. with Creed, just jean jacket. Like better than what MJF did, because I feel like Rhea could pull it off a lot better. She could do it better. <laughs> <laughs> but I, dude, I'm actually pumped when she comes back I and faces too. Liv. Like, Ricky, me and you talked shit on Liv Morgan for years, and this is the first time she's ever been interesting. <laughs> Listen, the- I was like, this is me. the nicest for you've me. ever been about Liv Morgan. Yeah, well, it's like now I, I kind of get what people saw in her. Yeah, it's the now crazy I, Now I get it. It's yeah, the it crazier, the better. Yeah. She, yeah, she found something that works for me. She needed to be and always kind of has been kind of a – a real life Harley Quinn with a little bit more sanity, but now she's kind mm-hmm. of digging into that crazy. I hate to be stasis, but crazy Jersey chick. She's got it. It's right there. It's oh, all yeah. there. Like if this happened a few years ago, she would have been way better than Alexa Bliss for this for the uh, Bray Wyatt character. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, she's the cra- cra- the crazier Liv Morgan is the better. Mm-hmm. That that yeah. her stick. She can't be like a serious. She can't be like the serious person when she was kind of in love with Lana. Remember that yeah. random oh, storyline? That. <laughs> that, that was really dumb. That they yeah. dropped real quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, she's not doing shoot the title, but it's like I don't care. There's no one for her to wrestle. This is better. Yeah, let let her let her go. Absolutely bananas. Also going on at Clash of the Castle. Probably the biggest shocker of the entire thing was. Oof. Jade and Bianca lost. They didn't take the pin, but they did lose to Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, two natives from Scotland. Um, nobody, none of us on our predictions saw this coming at all. We thought it was an easy win. Yeah. Absolute easy win. Um, Will, I know you have some comments. Do you feel like this was rushed? I think Jade got exposed. I, wow. I think I think because of the botches, dude. She botched up a storm in this match. She had one. Um, she, no, whoa, whoa, no. They're the only the only one that was a. I, I found mistake. three. Like three, what? three, three, and one wasn't her fault. One was a dive at the top rope. Shit happens. You know the springboard. That one, you mean the springboard? That's that's an accident. Happens. Yeah. And she recovered mm-hmm. fine. So yeah. I'll let that one go. The second one was a tap. Uh, she did tap. I know that's the way wrestlers communicate, but she did it right on camera. So yeah. That's 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 one for sure. And then three, uh, at the end, she didn't really go for the pin. She kind of like fumbled, like she like fumbled her keys, and kind of is a weird the finish. That's a little nitpicky. Yeah. And I see the this, tap thing is weird, but at least they played the storyline up well on Raw. Yeah, yeah, they acknowledged it. They did the right thing and acknowledged it, and then it's it is what it is. I think Jade got here. Now, does that mean her career is over and she's fucked and she's like not worth the hype? No. <laughs> it just shows she's still green and she needs a little more time. I think I still think because we show signs of brilliance there when she did the caught the catch in the flip like. Oh, you mean at the last factor, at the last PLE? Yeah. Mm-hmm. At, the, at the cash the cash. she did it. She caught both of them. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then did, 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 did the backdrop. Yeah. Yeah. The backdrop so, and the fall away slam. Yeah. She has all the potential. She has signs of greatness, flashes of greatness. She's just. Needs a little. She still needs a little bit more work with the fundamentals, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Like no. I don't think she was rushed to the main roster, no. but rushing to take the tiles off of her, yeah, I think that's a mistake. But I also think you know you need to give something the fans to be happy about because Drew's getting fucked. <laughs> yeah. So and they Pi- could, and Piper they, wasn't winning. Yes, they could be a transitional. They get pulled off at SummerSlam. Jada and Bianca get them back, and they have a little more character character uh, development. Like maybe they go a little more aggressive. And say, okay, no more, no more dancing, no more games. Now it's time to get bad and bit, bad and bitchy, and fuck up these bitches, right? 
So it could be a, you know, we gotta see where it goes. These, yeah. if, if this is a transitional champion, that's fine. I think if Bianca and Jade get it back, it's totally fine. But could Jade Bayley, still needs some work and yeah, crazy to take them off. I thought it was weird too, but I, I when you said they could just be more serious, could they be like the new Divas of Doom? Yeah, sure. But not really the Divas of Doom. They can call I don't know the baddies or something. I don't know some some running some running you know stick with them or what have you. But Kayfabe, what were your they thoughts? They do need it. They do need a name. What were your thoughts on the surprise semi surprise win? Okay, like as a fan of like NXT UK, like super happy for them. Oh, yeah. I thought it was like super cool to give them the Scotland win. Mm-hmm. But like I low key felt like it was to give them the Scotland win. Like no yeah. shade on them. Like I'm not saying that they're not deserving of the titles because they are. I just did not see it happening at this show. I also for- forgot they were in this match, if I'm being mm-hmm. even more honest. True. Um but I'm really curious to see what happens with Bianca and Jade on Friday. Yeah. No. I like, because I've been saying for a long time, like I, I was waiting for something to happen that would cause a slight, like a splinter in the friendship between Bianca and Jade. And I feel like, you know, Jade botching a bunch could very well, and then losing could very well, like be that first, like, like crack in the armor. I don't I don't know what they're gonna do because like they never took the pin. It's kinda like they got they kinda got like like sco- fucked out of it. Yeah, they they got they kinda got like sco- like kinda tricked out of it in a sense. So where is that safety? Yeah, it was it was a stolen win. It was a stolen win. So so there's that. Um Triple H did make a big, big uh not a big but Triple H made it very important to say that this was always the plan to have Isla and Alba win because there was a story that came out um about a week or so before this before this event that uh alba fire's mom passed away in a very horrific fashion so what ended up happening was i guess uh alba fire's mom who i think was only 51 or so was visiting alba fire with her husband down in florida and while crossing the street alba fire's mom got hit by a car and was and was called dead on the scene oh my god yeah fucking florida yeah so um there were the rumors like, oh, they gave him the win because it was like a pity win. But Triple H, no, it was not a pity win. These girls deserve to, you know, have the titles regardless of what has happened. But like, when you heard that, I was like, oh, that's horrible. Um, and it explains why they, especially Apple Fire, seemed very emotional after. Yeah, you know, she was. Win. And Ma- Michael Cole mentioned it on commentary, but no details. He was, so was very brief about, about it, but that was yeah. that was the that's her mom got hit by a car in Florida, and while crossing the streets, you know, and was. Was a uh, report was dead on was dead on the scene. And even if it is a pity pity win, who gives a fuck? Yeah, <laughs> they did something nice for a nice reason. Like it's not yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, but also like you're going to all of these places. You're going to across. You're going around the world. You're doing all these major or semi major events in places you've never been before. You have to give those fans something to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, and if if giving it to Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, who according to what according to the history of Scottish wrestling, according to a lot of the announcing, even Piper Niven, big trailblazers in that country for women's wrestling, you mm-hmm. gotta give them something to talk about. You gotta make them look. You gotta look. Gotta make one of them look good. Drew was getting screwed, like we said. We all knew Drew was getting screwed. The writing was on the wall for a very very long time. Piper had actually a good match, but she wasn't. No one's beating Bailey right now. Not yet. And so it was good business. Yeah, it was good business. It's it, this is a good business decision. And it's a good moment. Like the flowers were an awesome touch too. I thought that was a cool that moment. That was so sweet. I like that a lot. I thought yeah. The, yeah, I thought the flowers were, were an awesome of a touch. And we'll we'll see what we we'll see what they do with them. I know that I think they were injured for a very, very long time. Because they kept on making appearances and not making appearances. So we'll see we'll see what happens with them. But congratulations to them. I, I'm a big fan of Kaylee Ray too, and that's you know, she was also technically the longest reigning NXT UK champion or NXT, oh, longest reigning uh, champion of the common era before Roman, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, which is glad that Michael Cole didn't mention that. Uh, but moving along, we're just going to have a little fun here. Name this Max. <laughs> person. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's go. Name, name this person. Wrong answers only. Will Tarasov. Oh, Matt Cardona. Okay, <laughs> 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 babe. I was gonna say Zack Ryder, um, but <laughs> I, 
I guess. Fred says Catalina. Lay Mysterio. <laughs> Lay Mysterio. I'm gonna go with um I was gonna call oh I was gonna call Chelsea or Chelsea Verde was a was a fun one. She kinda looks like the cover the um Wrestle Attic Radio logo. This <laughs> should be our new logo. <laughs> what if we just cut her face out <laughs> and put it in? <laughs> It's Would we possible. get sued for that? No, I honestly, I think Chelsea Green would get a kick out of it. I think she has a crazy sense of humor. <laughs> she does, <laughs> like an absolute crazy. Like of anybody having fun doing nothing, it's Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green, <laughs> like <laughs> I love anything Chelsea does. Like when Piper never cut that promo on SmackDown, Chelsea Green was like her hype man. <laughs> I yeah. love her as Piper Niven hype man. It's really funny. It is really funny. And it's it's a shame. Like, she's making the best. Because remember, we were supposed to get Chelsea Green and Carmella as a fact, as a tag team. I know. And she was got prego. <laughs> yeah. And she's apparently, from what I read, she's been having, she has a lot of, com- not complications post-pregnancy, but like. Oh, wait. Speaking injury of Injury post-pregnancy. Who's pregnant? Okay. Well, I had heard a rumor a while ago that Bianca could be pregnant. Really? And like. I heard a rumor a while ago that Bianca might be pregnant, like shortly after they won the titles. And I'm wondering, like, wait, was it based? They were. They would have dropped a lot earlier. Yeah. Wait, was it based on when uh, when um, Dawkins trolled Montez on his Instagram? I don't remember. I don't remember. Time blurs for me. But it was after they won the titles. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was like right after. But I heard a while ago that there was a rumor that. Bianca might be pregnant, and then they took the titles off of her. Oh, to excuse that. I don't. So there was there was a there was a weird thing that happened, Kay, a, a while ago, uh, like about, about a month or so ago, where right before like a SmackDown, Montez Ford's um, Instagram, where he says like you know wrestler blah blah blah, and it says he has like he already has like three kids or something like that, two or three kids. Mm-hmm. And then someone, apparently Dawkins, might have changed it to like father of four. And oh so the God. internet went ablaze. We're like, <laughs> oh my God, is Bianca pregnant while 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 Dawkins is losing his mind on the internet, just like dropping all the many chains of like father of five. <laughs> That's crazy. You know? No, I definitely didn't hear that. I just heard <laughs> I, I just had heard a rumor that Bianca might be pregnant. I mean, I mean, if it happens, it happens. I mean, it'll just be I, I still I want to see more of Jade and Bianca. Me too. Yeah, and I think Jade was also thrown off a little bit. Apparently, Jade didn't get her. That was yeah. She lost her bag. She lost her bags. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. So she was. So they weren't matching for like the first time ever. But they but they do need a faction. But anywho, yes, that was Clash of the Castle. Obviously, going to have more on that. Wait, wait. What? What's what's Rey Mysterio's daughter's name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Aaliyah, there you go. <laughs> Aaliyah Mysterio all grown up. <laughs> Aaliyah Mysterio. <laughs> oh my god. I wish she stayed more, but then they, she had that she had that uh, storyline with Buddy Matthews. Me too. Mm-hmm. She is good as a button. Yeah, she is. I want Aaliyah to come back and uh like fight like fight Rhea. Like what a what a weird triangle that would be. Could you imagine? Can you imagine the weird tri like let's think of it? Rhea in real life is about to be married to Buddy. Rhea in mm-hmm. storyline is in love with Dom. Also in storyline, Liv Morgan is trying to screw Dom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Then you have Aaliyah, who was also in a storyline relationship with Buddy Matt. Like, there's a great mess of a story that you can pull if they were all in the same she's, company. She's to try and fuck Liv. <laughs> like, how do you like it, girl? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, there's a great mess of a story that you can do with that. Um and also, yeah, before Dude, we... Liv's Father's Day tweet was really funny, too. Oh, she said, happy, happy Father's Day. Happy birthday. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Daddy Dom, yeah. <laughs> Daddy Dom. Ugh. Yeah, it's so gross, right? It's so fucking gross. <laughs> it's so good. It is so good. Uh, speaking of, speaking of, I guess, small children, Will, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this, too. Izzy, our semi-friend of the I show. I did. I saw this. Izzy won her first world title. She won a title belt. <laughs> won a- oh wow, good for her. Yeah. Izzy won a title um somewhere. I forgot where it was, but congratulations to Izzy. Somewhere in Florida. Somewhere in Florida or someplace. Yeah, congratulations. She's to the Izzy. FCW women's champion. <laughs> <laughs> 
They're one step closer to Izzy retiring Bailey. One step closer. Yep. One step closer. <laughs> one step closer. It's almost that. Ba- Bailey just turned 35, so clock's ticking. Is she 35? I saw her on Facebook the other day, so it could have been a lie. It was her 35th birthday. She yeah, her be. birthday was the same day as Clash of the Castle. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know if she was 35. I thought she was like 32. Hold on, I'm going to look yeah, it up. Check for me. Check for see, it seems old. For Bailey, I know yeah. Bailey is around my age. And I'm gonna born be and I'm eight, gonna be thirty three. Eighty nine. Oh, she is thirty five. Yeah, she just turned thirty five. Oh. Jesus Christ. Hey, we want some Bailey. Go right ahead. All right, Bailey. Congratulations. Thirty five. All right, we're gonna end up the show with a couple of interesting stuff. So Obviously, WWE has opened up essentially their version of the, of the Forbidden Door and the Prohibited Portal, blah, 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 with TNA. And that showed that WWE is willing to work with other promotions on a very interesting basis, at least with NXT. Well, the last couple of weeks, WWE has pretty much said, we're going to be open and working with a bunch of other people, particularly in Japan. So we have on the screen right now, uh, it was announced that this up in this more of a start of, I think, Japanese uh, women's wrestling company called Marigold is having what there's known as Summer Destiny in 2024. And WWE is sending over... Io Sky, formerly of Io Shirai of Japan, to fight Ut- uh, Utami Hayash- Hayashishita uh, in a Queen of Queen match. Uh, so very highly doubted match there. And also newly for newly, I guess, signed wrestler Julia is going up against Sari, who was formerly Saray in NXT and didn't really work out for her. But she is also going to go over and fight this match uh, July 13th as well. Also. In addition to all of that, that wasn't the other big surprise here. WWE also announced that AJ Styles that same day is fighting. Wow, look at that picture. Yeah, look at that hair. He looks Jesus. like a romance novel cover. <laughs> he does. It's, it's does. giving it's like, Fabio. It does. It's like literally, it's like I expect the bottom half to be a mermaid. <laughs> he's a, he looks like it, it's a he's merman. The top half of a centaur. Merman. He's a merman. Like literally, like it's it's like um, uh, AJ Styles. Is King Triton. <laughs> Rab Schneider is a screwdriver. <laughs> oh, man. Look at those ass. Yes, so on the same day, Pro Wrestling Noah. Just look at his hair. He looks fucking incredible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, AJ Styles is returning to Japan under Pro Wrestling Noah facing. Uh, Naomichi Marafuji, I hope I said that correct, um, Merman, cough, cough, Merman, um, in a first ever matchup, Mar- Marafuji, an accomplished wrestler, one of those wrestlers who was very, who was very big, um, except in every place except for WWE, a four-time world champion in pro wrestling, Noah, AJ Styles, never wrestling for pro wrestling, Noah, because he had an established woman in New Japan, and New Japan, and pro wrestling, Noah, kind of are at odds with each other, they're kind of the AEW and WWE, over there uh, in Japan. So AJ Styles making his debut in Pro Wrestling Noah in what potentially may be a match of a year candidate. This is one of those like dream matches that AJ Styles has never done. And AJ Styles apparently isn't coming alone. He's bringing Gallows and Anderson with him as well. Yeah. <laughs> so Ooh. it's going to. Anderson's more on a vacation. He needs to see his hot Asian <laughs> wife again. Um, <laughs> yes. Thank you for buying some merch, uh, Fretz. Uh, so. This is going to be interesting. Um, we have Styles returning to Japan in a in a hall in a place he's never done before. Io Shirai coming back for the first Io Sky or Shirai coming back for the first time since 2018. Gulia, who might who should be ready to go. There's a rumor she had surgery. The reason she hasn't wrestled in NXT, she broke her wrist and was supposedly had oh, wow. surgery because apparently the rumor was she's supposed to be Roxanne's next opponent. For, for Heat Wave in a couple oh. of weeks. So I don't know how that's going to go. Obviously, we have not watched NXT yet. Um, but that could be the thing. But uh, real quick, what are your thoughts, Will, on this new direction with WWE opening their doors up to some of our talent? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, especially people who have, like, um, history there. Like, I could see Kevin Owens going. Is Kevin Owens? Kevin Owens is special in Japan, right? Maybe? No? I want to say anyway, yes. I don't I could I could see I could see Kevin Owens doing it. Um, I hope they give him Tozawa. The power of Tozawa. <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope I hope our truth goes. <laughs> like, um, I guess he's Shayna Baszler that are going. Like, there's definitely certain people I could that would make sense going. I think this is cool. You know, I mean, sh- props to AEW for doing this first, and 
showing WWE that it can be successful and it can work and fans do want to see it and fans do know yeah. these other wrestling. And if they don't, it's like, well, they can go if they want to. Like, There's no harm to WWE in letting their stars do this unless they're hurt, unless they get hurt. Yeah. And it's going to become a problem. But AJ Styles has finished a program. There's nothing else for him. Might as well let them go do something. Yeah, I, I like the idea, and I think the difference is with, with this is that these are kind of just one-offs where I think AEW kind of drags them yeah. out a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of like they're there. It's a, it's a spe- they treat, I see WWE treating these as special attraction matches. Yeah. This- like if you have people on the roster and WWE roster you're not using, you have no storylines for, you can go send off to a one-off in Japan or a one-off in Mexico yeah. or a one-off in whatever, TNA. There's no reason not to. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they do. They even do it with NXT. Like Baron Corbin was in NXT the past six months. Some yeah. of you might not even have known that. <laughs> and he had a great run in NXT. He won a title. And apparently, he had, and apparently, yeah, he had good run. He was a tag team champion, and I cheered for him at WrestleMania weekend. <laughs> yeah, wow. he did. So yeah, that's how good it can be. <laughs> yeah. But still, like there there are other options. Like if you have these talent, find creative ways to utilize them. If you can't get them TV time. Yeah, and it also just it spreads the WWE influence out even more. And the rumor is that. Triple H is looking into Puerto Rico and Mexico as those next special attraction stops for a lot of their performers, which makes absolutely all the sense in the world. Uh, Kayfabe, yeah. who would you want to see in what promotion around the world from WWE fight whomever? Do a fantasy book something for me right now. Um, someone versus um, someone, someone versus someone, someone else over. outside of WWE. Someone in WWE versus all someone right. outside of WWE in their promotion. It's over for me. Um, <laughs> oh, did the, I, did the muscle relaxers kick yeah. in? Yeah, we're gonna I wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely want the return of Dolph Ziggler. I do because too. that's the first I name I, I have I, in mind. I don't. I, do. I miss him so badly. He's, he's um, in TNA. It is highly possible now. Give me maybe. Give me Dolph Ziggler versus. Hmm, who would someone interesting be? Give me Dolph Ziggler versus LA Knight. Actually, I'm all about that. I kind of yeah. want to see that one. Will, same question to you. Fantasy book something. Uh, I don't, see, I don't know people outside of WWE. Okay, that's an issue. Um, Do TNA. I know you want to see Moose fight somebody. Oh, oh I want to see Obafemi take on Moose. <laughs> you want to see Moose die? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing Bobby Lashley Moose. Uh, Montez Ford and Moose would be cool. <laughs> Moose versus anybody. <laughs> Moose versus Braun Strowman would be cool. <laughs> oh, uh, I have one that I pitched to Mance the other night. Oh, yeah? I pitched Braun Breaker versus Goldberg. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. That I got from, like, a TikTok. There was I want to see Shinsuke Nakamura versus Joe Hendry. <laughs> Ooh. You know what? I want Joe Hendry. I still Hendry. want Drew versus Joe Hendry. I want Joe Hendry versus R-Truth. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> if I think if Elias had stayed with WWE, Elias and Joe Hendry could have been really fun. Elias is the weirdest person on social media these days. It's kind of yeah, scary. I heard he, he he led another Bible study the other day. Yeah, like I don't know if it's a gimmick or whatever. And hi, Smiley, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. A little late on this, but welcome, Smiley. Welcome back. Um, Smiley, look at AJ. Doesn't he look great? He does. He does. You know what? Mustafa Ali could do something. Apparently, he's having a crazy run right now in TNA. And you know what this does mean well now with the TNA and NXT partnership? Top Dollar could come back. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> he just, uh, he oh just won God. a title in TNA. He's a digital champion now. Digital media champion. Good. For What's him. a digital media champion? Something Tommy Dreamer started. <laughs> oh. Just friend. put it that way. <laughs> you tell me we can have Tommy Dreamer back in WWE where he belongs? You could. You could. Oh, the... fuck yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> now could. we're cooking. Let's go, baby. My favorite wrestler of all time, Tommy Dreamer. I wouldn't be mad about a Tommy Dreamer return, honestly. There, There is a... Um, there is a... Uh, there was this idea with, with Braun... With Goldberg and uh, Braun Breaker that, like, Braun Breaker keeps, like, running, a, running like, a muck until SummerSlam and Adam Pearce is like, I have a special opponent for you and it's Goldberg versus Braun Breaker at SummerSlam. Dude, Goldberg would bury him, though. That's the thing. That's the greatest part about it. And the internet would <laughs> lose their mind. fucking minds. I, as someone that actually hates Braun Breaker, give it to me. 
I, I don't can see hate Dave Bro- Meltzer now, <laughs> negative two stars. I don't hate Bromberg. I think he's being booked <laughs> rather well. And like Exactly, which is why he is getting, being booked well, but I just don't like him. I get it. I think he's great. But especially I think he's but that's especially why if Goldberg comes in and buries him, people are gonna lose their fucking mind. <laughs> because they're booking him so well. He's so fast. I know, Will, you saw it in person. You were like, holy shit. Like, how he runs the ropes. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, by the way, before we get off this, Will, have you seen online when um, Braun Breaker, when he tackled uh, Ludwig Kaiser? Yeah, he murdered him. No, no, no. Someone redid the shot because the aerial view was perfect for it. And they did it with the uh, with the sonic rings. So as soon as Ludwig gets tackled, a bunch of sonic oh. rings. Oh, my, <laughs> my God. God. It's in Tip of the Crown, I think. Someone also did it for when AJ took the spot in the I Quit match when he fell through the table. So, like, you have Ludwig running and he collects all the rings. That's hilarious. <laughs> and then he gets speared and all the rings go away. Someone's doing the Sonic edits for a lot of big spots and it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But yeah, no, WWE is spreading their wings really, 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 really far right now. Um, and it's it's uh it's it's great. Wrestling is freaking awesome. You don't know who's going to show up where now. Everything's wide open. Um including our show because next week, ladies and gentlemen, as we mentioned earlier before, uh Slack is coming back for the first time in over 18 months because we we forgot Slack. And Mr. Wild P, we're going to have a war of worlds uh Slack and Mr. and Mr. YLP going at it. It's pretty much going to be wrestlers court. Uh, we're we're going to talk about Forbidden Door and all the calamity. Uh, uh, Kfa, bring back Freckles for God's sakes, please back Freckles. Bring back Freckles. <gasps> oh, I can bring back Freckles next week. Yes, please, please. I just want to torment Slack as much as possible. <laughs> wow, wow, Smiley already saying boo fuck Slack. <laughs> we're gonna need I'm gonna need that energy for Slack. We maybe we should maybe we should have people like live like vote who wins the battle between Slack and Mr. Wild Pete. That's how I'm gonna so I'm gonna promote the show next week. Wait a minute. Why have we never made Team Slack and Team Fuck You Slack shirts? Because there's not enough Team Slack people. Fair yeah, enough. who's gonna buy it like me? Yeah, just like, kind of. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be the only spokesperson. I think Fretz will buy just out of spite. Fretz is a person I see would buy Team Slack stuff and then burn it on video and send it to Slack. <laughs> Could you imagine just walking around Canada and then seeing a Team Fuck You Slack shirt in the wild? That's the greatest part about the stick is because no one would know why somebody was so aggressive to make shirts like this. Like who the fuck is this Slack person? Exactly. And why do people have such beef with them that they have a shirt? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I already have a design idea if we did Team Slack. Like, I want to do like the, the serial killer using the magazine and all the different you letters do, of you Slack. Do, <laughs> you Slack, though. You're probably going to let out fuck. Yeah, we probably, our, yeah our, our merchandise probably wouldn't allow that, but it'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> we just, oh. I don't like that. I'm shocked you haven't released them yet. It's because it it's, wouldn't work. We need to give Slack more heat and probably more time on the show before we do anything. We literally forgot about Slack for a year and a half. But, okay, I do give you permission to make a show cover for next week. I'm going to be real. You're not going to do it. I don't have time for that. That's fine. No. I can do it. I can do it. Or give me give me a cut out of Slack's head. I want to put Slack's head in there somewhere. I'm trying to think what the design could be. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. I want like Slack's head on something coming through a door. <laughs> what if you what if you take the same cover from this week but put the his head? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just coming through the door. I might actually. That's a great idea. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna write that one down. So yeah, next week. Or what if you get like? What if you get like a hell in a cell and you get slack poking out of the hell in the cell? Well, we have the picture coming of out of Mick my Foley. cage. And I've been doing just fine. It's speaking of because Bad Blood's probably gonna come back in October. Uh, what if we had a? What if we had a picture of Foley falling off a cell and just put Slack's face and him falling down, and have Mister Wild <laughs> and have Mister Wild P logo of him throwing him off the cell. <laughs> Wait, that's really funny, actually. I like that. I'll play around with it. We've got about a week or so. Uh, but I know your muscle relaxers are kicking in, and Will and I are probably going to BS for a tiny little bit. Um, 
after you know i'm peacing after the show so mr turk so if you may oh yeah that's me yeah that, that's your cue sir yep got it there you Nailed go it. proud of you Ladies and gentlemen, Hell in the Slack is a great Hell in the Slack in a stack. A little bit too much literation, but I like it. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast episode number 380, Money in the Six. It has been a sick couple of days in the world of pro wrestling, particularly WWE. Who knows what's going to happen with the Wyatt Six, and who knows when Drew's going to show up again. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me in Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, some people's DMs, less people's text messages, which I have to check when I get off of a show. Uh, find Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, and subscribe. The, the link to all of that stuff is in the link below. We have some great merch out on Wrestling Radio, the cure for the Common Wrestling Podcast. Follow Wrestling Radio socials at Addict underscore Wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Addict Radio everywhere else. Will Tarashock. Uh, Fretz, you were so close. Uh, Slack in a cell was right there. Oh, it was right yeah. back for you. Right there. WWE new pay per view Slack in a cell coming to you just coming to you live on Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Will Tarish. Like T is and Thomas A R A S H U K. I had nine one one on speed dial because I saw Jay Tay in his car and I was like, oh no 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 no, it's gonna be right now. <laughs> And yeah, it's my fault. We got that gorgeous mugshot that's in the internet forever now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, Murphy, how you feeling? I'm going to bed, y'all. Um, yeah, you are. That's all I have to say. You can find me across <laughs> two social media platforms. Me AKA Instagram and TikTok, because I deleted everything else. At K underscore Fabe. Please check out our Pride merch on the WrestleRadict ADO Teespring store. Yes. And yeah, see you next week. Yeah, when we come back next week, folks, uh, Slack, Mr. Wild P, it's going to be a loud, it's going to be a long show. Uh, it's going to be absolutely borderline uncontrollable, and that's what's going to make it all the more fun. So until next week, folks, goodbye, good night. We'll see you soon, and I cannot wait to save us in person. Fuck you, Slack. See you next week. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.